the early 90s. It was a great time for video games, with the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis duking it out in the console wars. However, it was a very dark time for baseball, with roided sluggers like... Well, to avoid slander, I won't say any names, but the point was, it was a time of artificially enhanced stats and broken records. Homers were going 500 feet, and fans just stood in awe as the game changed before their eyes. Through all this nonsense, though, there was one constant. Cal Ripken Jr., the hardest working player in history. This is Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball for the Super Nintendo. Strike. Now, Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball was not one of the bigger baseball titles that Nintendo had on their systems. While the RBI Baseball franchise transitioned to the Super Nintendo, it took its MLB player names with it. Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball doesn't have that, with the obvious exception of Ripken himself. Instead, this game chose to sneak around this problem by finding original players for the game. I don't think anyone will have to think twice about who Jose Seiko is representing, or who that pitcher Ryan Knowles is supposed to be. In addition to these guys, there are also a few punny player names. Jack B. Nimble? Are you freaking kidding me? This is one of the hardest baseball games I've ever played, at least from a batting perspective, which uses a similar style to RBI baseball. Characters slide around in the box to anticipate pitches, and you must swing at the perfect time to get a hit. While swinging at the right moment is similar to a real baseball game, you must be incredibly precise to get on base in Cal Ripken's version of it. Ow. Pitching is a little bit different, and it can actually be a little too easy at times. You can curve and slow down the ball during the middle of a pitch, so the batter really doesn't stand a chance. This is definitely a low-scoring game, but that just makes the occasional run even more important. Although by today's standards, the game isn't exactly realistic looking, for the time, it actually was much easier on the eyes than its competitors. The developers chose to give it an almost painting-like graphical style, so it actually holds up well 19 years after its release. That being said, some limitations of the Super Nintendo did lead to a few problems. The baseball just gets bigger as it flies up in the air, so it can be hard to judge where the ball's going to land. It's still a little bit funny to miss a pop-up that's right to your infielder. Ow. While the game already stands out on its own as one of the most unique titles for the Super Nintendo, it's also completed with amazing music. It's simple. A dude playing slap bass with the occasional organ thrown in, but the song actually keeps the pace up during a very low scoring game. The umpire just has an awesome voice as well. You don't have to wait very long before he makes the call. Come on, Blue, is he safe or out? Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball is one of those games that just went under the radar and never got the recognition that it deserved. It came out almost two decades ago, but I've played it for years, and I still continue to play it to this day. For a little throwback to what baseball used to be like, track down a copy of Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball. Try to play it for 2,632 days without taking a day off. You can do it. Mm -hmm.